Today, if you're going to panic, panic first. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to our latest post covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian and New Zealand perspective. And today I'm joined again by property expert, Joe Wilkes. Hello, Joe. Good morning, Martin. Good to see you once again. Good to see you. I was over you uh, over in your fine country over the weekend, up in the Gold Coast, having a, a, a little bit of a look around, chat to a couple of businesses and to a wedding to attend. So yeah, just thought I'd... Uh, Come back to the wonderful weather of New Zealand. It's a bit cold here today. <laughs> so they let you in but and let you out again. That's, that's pretty good. It's a good yeah. sign. It's a good sign. I haven't been blocked at the passport control yet. Very good. Now, there's some panic over there in the, in the New Zealand uh, realms of power by the look of it. Well, they do say, don't they, financial markets, if you're going to panic, panic first. And, um, well, we've, uh, we've pressed the button. Your uh, Reserve Bank governor was um, uh, quite uh, sort of, I suppose probably thinking about your general election and um, he didn't make a move this week. Our Reserve Bank Governor has made a move and cut the interest rates by a quarter of a quarter of a percent. Um, and uh, yeah, well, there's a lot that's been talked about. It's uh, the, the evening that the cut took place, there was um, a big uh, push on the news about what a wonderful thing this would be for first time buyers. Great time to get into the market. Um, my view on it is that this is a, um, a reaction to data that they've obviously got, um, uh, and some of which you and I know, um, that uh, the masses don't. And um, this cut is, is a reactionary measure, in, in my opinion, because uh, of the, the severe pressure that the Auckland housing market is now under. Right, because we know that values are continuing to fall in the round Auckland. We do, and we also know that sales volumes are, uh, well, they're at levels not seen since the uh, post-financial crisis era. So uh, I've, I've got some uh, wonderful people now who are getting in touch with me directly, providing information, providing analysis. So thanks to the DFA subscribers who are doing that. Um, but we've, we've got one, one chap in particular, Mike, who's had a look at the, um, I guess, the four-month averages for sales volumes around Auckland. And... Um, the, we're, we're back at uh, a point where the last four month sales in Auckland have been their lowest cumulative four month period since, any, well, beyond any point between 2008 and 2011. So that's the post financial crisis period. Um, March sales just a touch above where they were in 2008 as a month. Um, but the, the volumes, and you've got to consider that. In that last 10 or 11 years, and particularly in the last five years, we've had a major building boom. So the overall rooftops and amount of stock available in the market um, is far greater than it was in the post-financial crisis period. So there's more property to, to be moved for people to transact around, um, but the sales volumes are not there. And I haven't seen the C31 data, which is the new lending data from, from the RBNZ yet for April. That's not been published. Um, but March um, and February were weak. Um, there's there's still growth in lending. We're not we're not talking about negative growth in lending, um, but it has it has flatlined. And and I think that this um, attempt to uh, I suppose reinvigorate the housing market is because the governor, um, albeit uh, nobody questioned him on it, must be very very concerned about new lending growth. And is it true that um, the Prime Minister over there is now suggesting that perhaps migration rates should be allowed to continue and grow? Yeah, well, this is the thing, and uh, we, we've had this in the UK, the, the, the conventional model, I suppose, of dealing with the debt crisis seems to be we'll just pump more people in. Um, we've got a government that were voted in on the back of a number of things, introducing capital gains tax, and um, that's been shelved, um, and we know why, because the the market isn't going to go up for a number of years. So for many, this is this is going to be a pressure. Um, and also on reducing immigration numbers. Now, there was a little bit of a, um, a, a reduction in the year-on-year -year growth when Stats New Zealand decided they'd change how they calculated it. Um, but we are still back up there. And while it's not at the peak levels recorded 2017, um, it's still very high, um, still about 85%. And this is how modern governments think they can deal with a debt crisis. Um, they think that by just simply importing more people, 
um, they will provide more demand in the economy and uh, subsequently get themselves get themselves out of, I suppose, the shtuck that the bankers have put them in. Now, we saw this in the UK. I think we talked about it on our um, uh, Lessons from the UK post. Uh, the UK has continued m massive immigration into the country. We've had a lot of European uh, immigration, a lot of uh, immigration from uh, sort of the Indian subcontinent, a lot of immigration from Africa. And over the 10 years since the financial crisis, the UK population has increased by about three and a half million. Now, um, we're doing that here. Um, and I, I think whatever government gets, gets uh, uh, I suppose, elected in Australia, that there won't be there won't be a, um, a a concerted effort to reduce the numbers of people coming into the country because they need them to try and prop all this all this debt up um, and all this overbuilding that's gone on. Um, why are they doing it? Demographics is I think the the, the biggest thing. Um, and, and if you look at the demographics now, we've got uh, a spike about to happen in in our retirement uh, community. There's People who are born from 1946 onwards have started retiring. We've got a big, big peak um, coming. 1955 birth year is the the start of several years where uh, the birth years just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, what we're going to find is that it's a natural thing as people retire and they stop having that money coming in the front door every month from from income, they spend less. Um, they don't buy new cars as, as frequently as they used to. Um, they might go on, on the occasional holiday, but they probably stop eating out as much as they do when they know they've got a consistent money coming in to, coming in to, um, to pay for it all. Um, because they don't know how long they're going to have to use their retirement, retirement pool for. Now, where, where New Zealand's at at the moment is that this is just beginning. Um, I think the previous government probably recognised it, which is why we've had such high immigration over the last uh, seven or eight years, just to try and provide the workers to support the, support the demand in the economy and support the businesses, uh, not just from, from cheaper labour, but also from, from having uh, people spending, you know, earning and spending within, within New Zealand. Um, that's one of the other reasons I think the Reserve Bank government has probably cut its rates because the top end of the market um, has stalled um, in Auckland. It is the, the upper end of the market where the higher value properties are that are seeing the, the highest percentage falls. Um, the cheaper areas are uh, still doing okay. Uh, there is year on year price growth in some of the, um, the, the peripheral suburbs of Auckland. Um, they're not always the nicest suburbs, but They've, they've, I suppose, been affordable for a first-time buyer. They've been affordable for people who've moved into the country and, and have built up the savings to go and take on a, a you know, 95 or sorry, an 85% loan. Um, um, there's also been quite a lot of speculation from, I think, these these baby boomers and, and, and people nearing retirement thinking, do I have enough to, to retire comfortably? No, I don't, but the property market's going up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, to leverage myself into an investment property for two, three, four years before I get to retirement to try and make some capital to fund me. Um, the Australian New Zealand dynamic is, is, is very much been property focused. Mm -hmm. If you switch that into a, a US perspective, um, where we've got 70% of our wealth tied up in, in property, the US perspective, everybody's gambling their pension funds and, and leveraging their pension funds into the stock market. So that's where the US bubble is now. Bubble is in, in property. And we, I don't know if the, the Reserve Bank governor is really thinking about this because what he's actually done by lowering the cash rate, um, immediately the uh, the banks have uh, trimmed, uh, not, they haven't gone the full quarter percentage point off term deposits, but they've taken between uh, 0.15 and 0.2% and off the term deposit offerings is that they've immediately created a little bit more pressure on those people who might not have thought about selling um, if they could get a better return on their savings for retirement. So we could we could see that that actually creates pressure at the margin for those that haven't got enough for retirement, are coming into retirement and are then forced to sell, top end markets weak. Um, that could actually create a further issue with, with um, not, not forced selling, it won't be forced selling, many of them won't have to do anything yet, but it could provide the extra stock that the market looks at and says, well, well, don't have to buy just yet, look at all these things that are coming on, we'll just wait, there might be something better. In and amongst that, there will be those who are 
Um, they, they want the money. They've, they've got into retirement with, with mortgages or getting close to retirement with mortgages. And we looked at this um, a while back with our, I think it was the Baby Boomers post, where there, there are some really heavy mortgages from um, the over 55s in New Zealand who are now hitting hitting um, those, those points where they're starting to think about fixed incomes rather than gambling with their, gambling with their savings. Yeah, it's very interesting. We have, of course, some segmentation running in Australia. We don't do the same in New Zealand at the moment, unfortunately. But we've got this group called the down traders, which are the people you're talking about, right? So they're older, they've got uh, quite a lot of assets sitting in property, and in some cases still got mortgages. And as they approach uh, that uh, sort of retirement threshold, more of them are now saying, oh, maybe I should look to sell now rather than wait, because the property prices are actually coming down. So we're seeing more of those people now wanting to exit from where they are and they tend to be the ones higher up the market they've got uh, you know bigger properties they've had time to grow that over the, over the years so there's something really quite scary happening for those down traders because they're suddenly waking up to the fact that if they're not careful they're going to see the equity in their property whittling away they're going to see very low returns on deposits and where do you put your money? You know, if you've, if you've got money, I mean, the stock market, as you say, is the other alternative. And of course, until quite recently, they've done quite well there. But it is getting quite complex. And, um, you know, I've noticed that uh, the people that we're talking to and have actually even posted on our, on our blog are saying it's really tough to know what to do and where to put where to put money. And some, I think, will be enticed into you know, rather scary things like Bitcoin, which has gone up quite a lot recently, you know, well, no, no real firm basis for that. That's just speculative. Or um, looking at some of these sort of higher return schemes. But of course, some of these higher return schemes are actually, you know, extremely uh, suspect. And of course, you know, if the rate's high, then you've got to ask some hard questions about what it Why? really is, because the, there is really no silver bullet to this how do I get the returns question? So this is a really complex and difficult thing. And yeah, I guess New, other... Zealand has, New Zealand has got a bit scared of the, the finance companies because there were so many that, that went under during the financial crisis. Um, mm. That time, they were fortunate enough to be bailed out. And it was just the finance companies uh, publicly that got bailed out. And that there, was, there was support for the Australian banks from, from the Federal, Federal Reserve of, uh, of the US. Now, where, where we are today is that We've got a massive gap. The millennials, the millennials, um, uh, I suppose they're the ones that are now being encouraged to try and support this. Them, them, and uh, the new new arrivals into Australia and New Zealand. The millennials, however, are in a very very different situation to, to my generation. I'm I'm an exer, um, and, and you know, most most of most of my generation, we we just jumped straight on the on the bandwagon of own a home. It'll always go up. That's what our parents told us to do. We were fortunate enough to, um, if we were lucky, buy a house. Uh, in the early 2000s and um, those that didn't uh, many of them then got stuck um, the the situation however is that the millennials they don't have the, the capacity their earnings are being hamstrung by by uh, the immigration they've often um, and unlike my generation many of whom had a in, in the uk we had a free education until 1997 if you went to university started up until that point you didn't pay university fees mm -hmm. um, anyone after 1997 is paying university fees um, here today, the, the, the costs of courses so much higher that people are stepping out of university with significant debts, um, mm. and, and you know we're not talking you know five, ten thousand dollars worth of debt. It's often fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of debt. So before before we even go into the beginning of this, and, and you know the, the debt for the, the millennials has been to keep the spending bubble going, provide demand in the economy for credit, keep everything bu bubbling away. Um, but now we've hit this point where the demographics say that we're going, we're going to see a huge numbers of people exit the retirement. Um, unemployment is going to stay low for a, a period of time um, beyond the, the, you know, the, the job losses that you'll see in, in, and I think the construction sector on both, both sides of the ditch. Um, the, the natural unemployment levels may stay low because you can get quite a lot of people who are just coming out of the workforce and therefore won't be recorded in the un unemployment numbers. Um, the other thing that you're going to see is, is persistently low inflation because all of this, all of these people coming out of the workforce aren't going to create the, they're not going to be spending like they were and governments and reserve banks are going to find it really, really difficult to try and boost CPI to, 
to their, their target their target levels. So the Reserve Bank Governor in his speech yesterday, and uh, again, it's 24 hours, it was posted on, on YouTube, 96 people have looked at it by this morning, so we've got a really educated, educated populist. Uh, today, the official cash rate has been reduced to 1.50%. Uh, the Monetary Policy Committee decided that a lower OCR is necessary uh, to support the outlook for employment and inflation to be consistent with our policy remit. Global economic growth has slowed since mid-2018, easing demand for New Zealand's goods and services. This lower growth has prompted foreign central banks to ease their monetary policy stances, uh, supporting growth prospects. However, there is uncertainty around the global economic outlook. Trade concerns remain, while some other indicators suggest trading partner growth is stabilising. Domestic growth has also slowed uh, from the second half of 2018. Reduced population growth uh, in large part through lower net immigration and continuing house price softness in some areas has tempered uh, the growth in household spending. Ongoing low business investment uh, sentiment, tighter profit margins and competition for resources have all restrained uh, investment. Employment is near its maximum sustainable level. However, the outlook for employment growth is more subdued and capacity pressures is expected to ease uh, slightly over 2019. Consequently, inflationary pressure is projected to rise only slowly. Given this employment and inflation outlook, a lower OCR now is most consistent with achieving our objectives and provides a more balanced outlook for interest rates from here. Um, the Reserve Bank government was talking about the technology improvements, you know, why you know, everything was more efficient, that's why we've got no inflation. No mention of, of the risks of demographics and, and, and these are things that I'm sure they're thinking about behind the lines, but we need to start talking about it to the public because all of a sudden, there's going to be a lot of people who are just going to wake up one day in Auckland and think, oh, I'm ready to sell my house now. Um, nobody's talking about it in the press. And, and, and they may get a real shock um, that could completely change their life plans. Now, if, if we see, um, you know, I'm very confident that we're going to see uh, whatever happens in Australia, we're going to follow you, follow you down the rabbit hole. Um, if we do see that and, and it affects people's um, capital positions for retirement, this could be protracted. Many won't have the time to recover from it. It's different if you're a, uh, an exer or if you're a millennial, um, you want to be sitting back watching, waiting and, and seeing where this all unfolds because it's a great opportunity. Um, you know, wait, wait for those that panic first um, and then probably buy those that panic last. Um, that's an opportunity for, for the millennials to catch up in life and, and, and you know, it's not a nice opportunity, but it's one that I think will present itself to them. The baby boomers, they need to start thinking about, well, if this does happen and I do take a hit, I don't have the, the working life now to go and recover from it. Um, so it, it, I saw it in the UK and I saw a lot of people who got stuck. Uh, they waited and they waited and they waited, and particularly the top end of the market, did nothing. It did nothing from 2008 all the way through to 2016 and 17. Um, prices in, in the, the upper end of, of London, uh, there was a brief recovery 12, 13, 14, but prices at the top end have now been falling again since 2014. Not much publicised, but that's the reality of what's been happening. Um, uh, central London prime market, and, and you know these are the, 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 the bigger houses, the bigger family houses owned by the baby boomers in London, they are between 15 and 20 percent off the 2014 peak. We're still seeing movement up the, from the bottom because those that are cashing out adding to the demand at the lower end of the market, adding to the demand from first-time buyers, adding to the demand from, from separations and the divorces. So the bottom end of the market will probably have a little bit more protection. It's what we're seeing already in Auckland. Top end of the market, if you haven't prepared for it, you need to start thinking about it. No, I think it's a very important message, Joe, because um, this is going to come like a tsunami, right? This is going to be something which effectively will creep up on people, but all of a sudden it will hit. And, you know, I think that we're only in the early stages of people's awareness of, of, of this real problem. And bear in mind that, of course, many people are banking on uh, that um, value in the property, effectively supporting them into their retirement, into old age. And if that disappears, then not only does it put more demand back on the state, 
to, to provide more support for those particular households. But it also means you just don't have the flexibility and freedom that you thought you were going to have into, into retirement. So for many, retirement will look much more gloomy than they expect. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it, it's, a, it's a challenge because not only that, we have an awful lot of people getting close to retirement with heavy leverage. Yep. Um, our, 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 our markets are leveraged into property. If you look at the American markets, they have less leverage into their property sector now. Um, they did have heavy leverage. It, it has calmed down. The, the talk in America about a median household um, having about $55,000 in their property um, so they have savings, they have a heavier weighting in stocks and shares. Um, the thing, the cost of cost of two people living in America is about forty four thousand dollars a year. So um, it doesn't take long to use use that up. If that is used up by a market correction, and you know what we can't rely on now is the you know the big the boost of of foreign capital that was hitting the Auckland market before the foreign buyer ban. That was providing a lot of liquidity for a series of other transactions. Um, it's gone. There were only 180 transactions in the first quarter to foreign foreign residents in Auckland, 182, I think it was. So significantly down. It's actually 81% down on where it was this time, this first quarter last year. So huge removal of, of liquidity from the market. A lot of that liquidity had previously been hit, hitting the top end. Now. There's questions at the moment in Vancouver about what the impact of um, laundered money was in their market boom. Um, and, you know, well, I think it's become fairly evident now that it, it was having a massive impact because they're seeing heavier price falls than, than we are in, in, New Zealand, in Auckland. Um, and the pace of the price falls is faster than you're seeing in, seeing in Sydney. So. Um, I don't think we're immune to money laundering. Um, in fact, I think we were probably fairly open target to it. And, and if the, the Chinese are pulling back that capital, seeking seeking the you know those that were moving money out of the country, it's going to create it's going to create a headache. Yeah, no, indeed. Well, um, I guess those who've been watching the DFA channel for a little while should be a little more alert and hopefully not too alarmed, but uh, be thinking quite hard about what to do because. Uh, I think the decisions that people take over the next 12 to 18 months will be quite critical for their future financial performance. Absolutely agree, Martin. Joe, thanks for spending the time. Good to talk to you once again. Good to see you. See you again. Cheers. So, some really important insights from Joe there, I think. We'll see you next time. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching.